Yesterday I had the opportunity to talk to a class of about 60, 18 year olds in a monastery near Einsiedeln in Switzerland. These students are in their second last year of high school and they're doing what they call like a business week. So they all don't study business, but once in their four year high school program, they have the opportunity to partake in, a, in this business week where uh, in groups of four or five people each, they run a company for five days. They simulate all kinds of decisions and things that they need to do. Uh, CEO, chief marketing officer, operations, processes, I think one fifth row. And part of what they do um, during that week is they get some guest speakers to talk about what it is like to run companies. A friend of mine is a teacher there for that week. He normally works at a bank, but um, during that week he is one of their teachers and he invited me to come to speak to the students, um, something that I really liked. People at that age, between like 16 and 20. I think this age, 16 to 20, is a great age to just explore the world and be curious about anything. It's where a lot of young adults decide what they're gonna do with the next few years of their life. And so I really valued this opportunity to go talk to them and also get feedback from them and hear what they're thinking about and how they react to my lifestyle what they think about crypto and so on and so forth. One thing that surprised me when we were talking yesterday to these students was that almost none of them owned any crypto. When I compared it to the guys that I had in my recent army training course, who are, I mean, there are probably like five to 10 years older on average, but still they're almost, I'd say a third or 40% or owned some sort of token or coin or had at least played with it and maybe mined some or were very interested in crypto. Uh, these guys here, out of the 60 students that I was talking to, about, I'd say three or four held their hand up when I asked who owns any coins. Now, I'm not saying this is good or bad, I'm just saying uh, it was uh, less than I thought what it would be. And when we talked about tokens and coins, uh, one of the things we also talked about is how we can impact the education system. I found it especially interesting to talk to the students who are currently part of our education system to think, about how blockchain could change it, make it better or worse, and um, what they think about they can contribute to. Okay, here's what I think is wrong with today's education system. I think the education system in Switzerland is great. It's world-class, it's almost for free. Even going to you, a world-class university cost me, I think, 700 Swiss francs per semester, which is nothing if you compare it to the likes of Stanford or most other private universities in the US. But I still think there's uh, ways to improve the education system, especially on a global level. I believe that education and education systems are one of the biggest equalizers of the 21st century. I believe that if someone who is born and raised in a developing country, early on has access to similar education systems that I do here in Switzerland or someone does in the US, that individual's opportunities five, 10, 15 years down the road are gonna be much, much more equal to people in developed countries than not. Why? I think there's so many jobs that are currently coming into existence in our world that are mostly digital. And there's a lot of jobs that digital nomads can do. There's a lot of jobs for which you don't have to be in a certain place or a certain geography. You can just work from your laptop. And smartphones and laptops are getting cheaper and cheaper and more and more ubiquitous. That's why I think if someone has the same education and a very important point, can prove that they've gone through that education and have done the same test, they will have access to a much, much bigger job market than they had in the past. That's why I'm so passionate about it. And even though the Swiss education system works, it's still so random and, and you have to be kind of lucky in order to get good teachers. Teachers have such a huge influence. I was always lucky, I was fortunate. I had great teachers all through my school years. I had teachers who were fair, uh, but still tough. And I had teachers who saw talent and also gave me extra work in areas where I had an easy time following the lectures. So how do I think education systems could be improved? First of all, I'm not saying I have the solution. I'm not claiming to know how it is, but I think it's very interesting for all of us to think about this because education is such a big equalizer. And I think if we can make the world more equal and more fair, there's just gonna be less harm and there's gonna be less bad feelings and less conflicts. So I think it's very worth um, spending time on this. And I hope that technology like Definity or other blockchain-based infrastructure can help provide a better education system. I think what doesn't make sense is that we're still leaving content in the hands of each and 
every individual teacher. Content is there. There's no reason for us to invent yet another math course. There are online courses that have been viewed by millions and millions of people. They've been reviewed, they've been refined over the years. So there's just no need to create yet another course and for every teacher to go through that material and try to find out what's the best way to prepare this and choose the right topics. I think there's different types of learners, different type of personalities and different types of humans learn differently. And I think there's a ton of courses out there that are great and there's something out there for everyone. Content and form should be separated. Content, as I just mentioned, I think is what is it that we're gonna learn? What is the truth? What are the facts? And I think that's something that we don't need to go back to over and over and over again because it's there. We can take online courses that exist or math platforms or history books, whatnot. All that is there. It's fairly cheap compared to having someone individually prepared for 20 kids. Form is much more interesting and where I have less of an answer on how to do it. But I think to me, it just doesn't make sense that we give young adults the idea that they are gonna learn from age, let's say four or five, up and until the age of 18. And then they're not gonna learn anymore and they're just gonna work. It should all be about lifelong learning and teaching. I think learning becomes so much more fun once you realize that you can also teach others. And it forces you to really understand stuff. Things to a degree where you can formulate them in your own words and pass them on to someone else. And I've always really valued that experience, being able to learn something, uh, process it, and then pass it on to someone else. I think it's extremely satisfying. I think that's the first step where you realize you can do something with what you just learned. So I think form should be improved. And it should be improved in a way where it doesn't require special teachers or it's dependent on school infrastructure to be effective. Because ultimately, we wanna bring this education system to anywhere in the world, even if it's rural uh, Africa or India or any other country where the school system is not as, as developed. So number one for me is we should give people a, a way to not only be learners, but also be teachers. And I think for that, we need some sort of a community setup. I don't have the exact answer, but I think my thoughts are somewhere along the lines of this. You would enter a community. We all have friends, right? We all, I think there's, it's great. There's also a big social factor of going to school nowadays. You meet other people that are your same age. The only problem is right now, you only meet people that are the same age. We all know this from personal experience. Uh, kids sometimes uh, there's some that are exactly at this age and there are others that will better get along with uh, kids a few years older or younger. So I think mixing that up would extremely help make uh, kids more happy and uh, allow them to go to school in a brighter mood. Why don't we create these communities and, and let's say we keep the ages uh, similar. So you start somewhere between age 4 and 7, you want to start working somewhere between age uh, 16 and 20. Let's say we get together, the older guys teach the younger guys. So if you're just 4, 5 or 6 years old, you come there and you profit from the older ones and um, having prepared courses for you and you learn from them. There could be some adult supervision. Ideally, I think it would not be adult adults, which are 30, 45, 50, 60 years old, but it will be those uh, 16, 17, 18 year olds that are kind of at the end of their school process and they're about to leave that community and those are the ones governing. Then there's another um, thing that I think should find a way into school systems. Learning should be a lot more practical. For me, um, even though I like theory and I like math and uh, the abstract parts of physics, it's just so much more fun seeing stuff in the real world and seeing what impact it has once you understand what happens if you mix A, B and C together. I think a lot of the school examples that I went through uh, were a bit too theoretical, like the one that I just made up, like who's interested in that. But what we saw at Green School is that when they teach biology, they actually build a fish pond that then focuses on sustainability. So the plants that grow on top of the fish pond, they profit from whatever the fish produce, uh, carbon dioxide. The fish eat from what the plants produce. So they, they kind of create this equilibrium uh, where fish and plants get along. And I think that's something extremely powerful for kids to see. And not just for kids, like even for me, that's extremely powerful. I think that just seeing how the world works and being able to take control and build stuff stuff and create stuff. It's just such a satisfying experience. So where the blockchain comes in, where something like Definity, where it comes in is you got to keep track of qualifications and tests and what courses someone has done, right? And right now that's extremely easy for me to say I've done a certain online course and I think why we still are stuck with the existing school system is because we trust that um, all teachers in Switzerland or uh, to a wider sense in the world, they, they all do a good job at going through tests or putting you through tests and then they have a fairly 
very good idea of what uh, mark 5, 6 or 1 or 2 or whatever means and it's kind of standardized and that's why we trust it and that's why we don't trust an online course yet. Maybe I've hacked it, maybe someone else did it, maybe um, I found a solution somewhere and, and cheated my way through the test and I do understand the concerns. So what if we keep using the fact that people are very good at assessing other people and we have this community set up. The elders or the older ones, they could be the ones running the tests for the younger ones. Now whether that test is going to be once a year or once a semester or every month or weekly, I think there's a lot of ways to improve that. But let's say the older ones come up with tests and this could even be verbal. I think verbal tests are a great tool, especially to assess the knowledge and see how people developed and, and what their skills are. If those people have some disabilities, like there's a lot of people that just don't do well with writing and reading, but they're extremely smart and they should have the same qualifications, except we should see them with the same qualifications that someone that has uh, additional writing skills, right? I think everyone needs an identity on the blockchain in order to have a, a resume afterwards. Let's say you've gone through a certain course, basic math or German history. Others are gonna test you and you're gonna get your grade and then everyone who sees that grade, let's say your class and the guys that are teaching you this stuff and run the tests, they all link to your profile and say this grade is valid. Now because these groups are dynamic, I don't think you'll ever have like the same 20 people just gaming, helping each other game the system. I think that there will be network effects that are larger than that and you also probably want to learn history with other guys than uh, math because maybe math you're further ahead and you learn with people that are on average older than you are. So there's this mixed group of like, we could call them validators, but this could be like school or qualification validators. They basically confirm that you've reached a certain level in a certain field. So now you have all these trust vectors or all these validation vectors pointing to you and you have a bunch of trust vectors pointing to others where you've assess their grade. All right, not to make this any longer than it already is, I think I just want to get feedback. This is by no means a finished solution, but let me quickly summarize what I'm thinking about. So I think the current school system is a bit broken. A, it's so random and B, we just don't do a good job at offering everyone in the world easy access to education. And I think it's one of the biggest equalizers in the 21st century. We need to make education available to everyone and we need to make sure we accept the education systems that we provide them with equally trust worthy than our traditional school system. So a way that that could work, in my opinion, is by separating content and form. Content can be all the millions of or the thousands of online classes that exist. There's different courses for any type of learner. So let's use that content, let's refine it, let's give feedback to those who created it so they can make it even better and use that across the world to teach. Second, much more interesting and where the blockchain comes in is form. A community-led system could work very, very well because it's also scalable and it can work in rural Africa and India as well as it can work in downtown Zurich or San Francisco and it's where people get together and they learn together and they teach together and last but not least we introduce the concept of trust vectors so the older ones or whoever taught you a certain subject they test you they plus your peers who learn with you give you a trust vector and confirm that you got a certain grade and Dfinity could really help scale this infrastructure I'm really curious about the questions that you guys have the holes that you guys see again by no means I think this is complete I just wanted to share my current state of mind in regards to how education systems could make use of blockchain. Wanted to share that with you. Please leave comments and I'm looking forward to talking to you soon. Cheers.